I got an interesting request from a subscriber about trying to detail some of my process for writing orchestral works. I use Logic and mostly Spitfire Audio plugins. This one, uh, Orchestral Miniature number 51, I'll put a link in the description, really just features the Intimate Strings package from Spitfire Audio. It's part of their original series, I think. It's what I write with mainly. I just like the big pad sound and the fact that I can choose notes in any register of the orchestra and have them accounted for. And uh, if you just play a specific instrument, say cello, you're limited in your range. Now, um, let's see if I can see what I'm doing here. So this piece was really short. It's just uh, written in the piano editor, as I usually do. You can see I've added, uh, I've automated the expression, and I usually try to get the trailing ends of phrases to slope off in volume through uh, automating the expression. This piece, I know for sure, was written really with just a few chords. So I think if I look at it, one, two, three, four, I started with six note chords. I think you can see right here, one, two, three, four, five, six note chords. And one, two, three, it's probably seven, six note chords, something like that. Uh, I think from looking at the contour without listening to it again, there's a splice where I wrote out six, or sorry, seven six-part chords, uh, one bar each usually, and then uh, I studied Schenkerian analysis, and a big part of Schenker is prolongation. So I took each chord, as you can see, so here would be one chord, and I'm trying to elongate, prolong it in time by making voices go in different directions and to activate voices at different times. Uh, that's a real key feature of how I write usually. Uh, so if you look here, um, these days I'm trying to do it so that none of the changes in any part line up rhythmically, so that they're constantly shifting, and you feel this, uh, I'll hit play here, so that you get things shifting at different times. So I've adjusted velocity on some of these voices. You come over here and I've increased the velocity on those as high as they'll go to bring out inner parts that might be weak otherwise, particularly when using a pad texture like this where it's just all a big wash of orchestral sound. So, um, I just start off uh, using the, the cycle function up here, that yellow bar at the top, sorry. And I'll just cycle, in this case, I think it was seven different chords. Usually I choose harmonies like that based on their voicing size. So I'm trying to get from, I'm trying to give a good amount of space between each voice so that there's some room to move if I want to activate something and get it going. In this case, on purpose, the melody is constantly rising up in a similar way throughout. I uh, don't know what else I could say about this. I think it brings out the polyphonic texture to stagger these entrances rhythmically rather than having things on a grid. Uh, let me see, let me look at the tempo map real quick. Sorry, this is a little disorganized. I don't have any other way to film this. So, I didn't do anything with tempo. Uh, usually, 
in these orchestral pieces, there'd be quite a, a wide variance of tempo indications. Here I just decided to have a really stately, relaxed kind of theme going. I hope this video won't make you too seasick. I hope it goes a little way towards answering some questions. Uh, I appreciate your kind attention and wish you, as always, a very good day.